Hey monkeys, it's Jim from Small Time Outlaws, and this here is the 13th video in the Advanced Programming in Monkey tutorial series. In this video, we'll be learning about the preprocessor directives in Monkey and how we can use them to exclude or include parts of our code based on either the system that the it's being compiled on or the platforms we're targeting. And this is all done before the monkey code is translated or compiled. That's why they call it preprocessor. Okay, and so one of the common thing you're going to do with these preprocessor directives, you're you're going to be checking the target that it's being compiled for and then running target specific code based on which one it is. And there are other things you can check for, such as the system that it's actually being compiled on or the configuration you're using, whether it's in debug mode or in release mode. I'm going to kind of go over those real fast right now. So these are just basically constants, preprocessor constants, that automatically store a value depending on certain conditions. So in this case, one the first constant I'll go over is target. And the possible values of target are the whatever targets you are compiling for. So one might be HTML5. These are the ones that Monkey has by default. And of course, there are other targets out there that are being created or have already been made that are being added to Monkey all the time. But for right now, I'm just going to show you the basic ones. And there's even Metro coming. So I'll have Metro there. So those are the basic default possible values of this target constant. And now to go along with those, there's the lang constant. And this is going to give you whatever language the your monkey code is actually being translated into. And so one you might have is JS for JavaScript, AS for ActionScript, CS for C Sharp, Java for Java, and CPP for C++. And you'll notice that these are also the extensions for the source files for these languages, which that is important. And now the next one is host. And what host can possibly have are WinNT for Windows, Mac OS for Mac OS, and then Linux for Linux. And finally, there's the config constant. And what config can hold is whatever build mode you're using when you're actually compiling. And Monk, by, Monk can only do two build modes. That's either debug or release. And the way you do that in Monk is just go to Program, Build Options, and then you can just check and uncheck this T-Build, Build, Check. And now, just to test real fast, I'm going to show you how to use one of these. And to do preprocessors, you use that pound symbol. If you remember from when we were doing reflection, to inject the reflection filter, it's the same kind of concept. And this just tells the translator that this is a preprocessor directive, so it wants to that you want to execute this code before it actually translates into the other languages you're targeting. So now we're going to say if host, and this is just like any other if statement, you can say if host is Mac OS, and then I'll do an end. And because I'm on Windows right now, I can put whatever I want. It could be any kind of garbage, not even monkey code at all, and it's going to completely ignore it. So let's see, I created my own functions, you can believe me. And have it print works fine. And I'm going to build this just so you can see that it works and works fine. So, what it is is just completely ignored all this garbage once it saw that I'm not on Mac OS. And so, now one thing you can do if you watch the external declarations video before this, one thing that comes in handy with these preprocessor directives is you can include different files based on different targets. So in here, I'll say if target is HTML5, then we will import the HTML5 version of our external file. And then just like with any other if statements, you can have else if, and then you can say if target is X and A or something, and you can have else, and you end it all. Or you can also, and one cool thing about these preprocessor constant, you can inject them into your code whenever you, you want. So you can do something like, so instead of checking for each target, including a different file, one thing you can do is actually import, and say native, and then say you have a bunch of different files, all called external, but they all have the different extensions, like you have up here, 
they all have the different extensions for the different targets or the different code that you've typed them in. So the way to just inject these constants into this string would be to use the dollar sign, then these curly braces, and then whatever constant you want to include. So in this case, we want to do the lang constant. And so in this case, since we're building for HTML5, it's going to inject JS in there, and it's going to import native external.js. So that's pretty cool, right? And then so you can also, you don't have to do these preprocessor directives at the top of your code or anything. You can put them wherever you want to either exclude or include code at will. So I'm going to type in here, I'm going to check which config, config we're building under and if it's debug I'm going to print off debug mode. And then it'll say anything else and we'll print off release. And edit, and we'll run this. You can see where we are in debug, so it's going to print debug mode. And I go up here to program, build options, and uncheck debug build. Build it again, and you'll see we're in release mode now. So you can do different things based on whether you're in debug or release. If you want to, you know, turn on debugging automatically based on whatever you're building under, that's a good way to do it. And then finally, there's a couple more f functions you can use as preprocessor directives. That one is the error. So this is an error you can throw before the language compiles or translates. And we'll say error. If it's in debug, we'll say debug mode error. Ugh. Come on. So this will just throw up an error box. Wait, you got to actually be in debug, right? So we'll change it back to debug and build, and there you go, compile error, and then it puts up whatever error you want it to say. And you can also, for extra debugging purposes in the preprocessor, you can print, and you can print something, release mode printing, and we'll change it back to release. And what this will do is actually inject whatever you want to print off into the output of the translator, which in this case would be this output area here. So when we run build, you can see, okay, it build fine, but if you go back to your output, you can see right here, before it ever translated or built or cemented, it printed off release mode printing. And so this is, if you want to print off anything here for debugging purposes or whatever you want to, I don't know, whatever, whatever, you can print it off here in preprocessor mode. And that's it for preprocessor directives. So they're pretty handy, it allows you to do different things particularly useful say you're targeting iOS or Android so you do different things for mobile and so you can or if you're targeting HTML5 then you can like activate keyboard or other types of your mouse input so different things like that and I hope you learned something you can leave me questions in the comments or email me at jim at smalltimeoutlaws.com and I'll see you in the next video